everyone, Susan here. I hope you're all well and welcome to So Custom. Today's video is how I sewed up this little number. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric, this is a gabardine, quite a structured fabric, which is really good for a project like this. And then for underlining, I think this is a cotton polyester mix really soft, nice against the skin. And then for sleeve lining, this is just a standard acetate. And on to the cutting out. So I'm starting with the hood. I have two layers of that gabardine fabric underneath my pattern piece, a few notches around the curve and a couple at the neck. And the first thing to do here is to underline. So this time I have two layers of that checked fabric under my pattern piece. I have the same notches and you can see here I haven't cut out the whole pattern. I folded that inner edge in underneath and now that that's done I'm ready to join these two pieces together. So just lining up my edges and notches. My fabric is wrong sides together and stitching here within my seam allowance using a little bit of a longer stitch length right along that outer edge. So now that these two pieces are joined, I can work on the centre piece of my hood. So just one layer of gabardine fabric underneath my pattern piece. I have a few corresponding notches down each of the long sides and a centre notch top and bottom. And off camera I've cut out my underlining fabric, joined it with my gabardine and now these pieces are ready to be joined together. So just lining up my notches, my fabric is right sides together and stitching here at my one centimetre seam allowance. Taking it nice and easy around that curve. Starting and finishing with a back stitch. So that just needs a good press, which you can see I've went ahead and done here. And now to finish the edges on this little anorak, I've decided to make a feature of it and bind the edges with this red bias tape. So using my binding foot, lining up the edge of my fabric with the centre of the bias. And what this foot is doing is wrapping that bias the whole way around that seam. And if I'm stitching correctly, it's picking up that bias top and bottom and giving a gorgeous finish to all of my seams. So taking this really gently the whole way around, using a little bit of a longer stitch length again, back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. my first seam bound. It just needs a good press. And now that that's done, I'm ready for some top stitching. So I'm running two lines of top stitching, the first right on the edge of that seam, and I'm picking up that bias in underneath. Being really careful here around those curves. These stitch lines will be a bit of a feature, so I want to try and keep them as neat as I can get them. So that's my first line done. So for the second, I'm just lining up the edge of my foot with that first line and following it the whole way around. Starting and finishing with a back stitch. So 
so that's had a nice press happy with that and off camera I've repeated that whole process again for the second side and this is how it looks and I'm very happy with this so now that that's done I'm ready for the first part of my facing I have one layer of that gabardine fabric underneath my pattern piece a notch in the center top and bottom and before I can add this to my hood I just need to press in that top edge this will just make the next couple of steps really easy to do so now that that's done I'm ready to join this to that bottom edge of my hood lining up my notches and stitching at my one centimeter seam allowance Backstitching to start and backstitching to finish. So in preparation for understitching I need to press that facing away from the hood but make sure that the seam in underneath is butted up against it and I'm going to run a stitch line about a millimeter or two away from the line you've just seen me sew using that same longer stitch length again and this understitching is just going to help that little bit of facing to sit inside the hood nicely tucked away. So that just needs another press, this time towards the hood. And ready for stitching right along that pre-prepared crease. Back stitching to start, sewing as close to that crease edge as I can get sticking with that longer stitch length and finishing with a back stitch and once it's had a good press this is how it looks happy with that so now on to the second part of my facing my fabric underneath is on the fold I have a notch at the fold line in the center and just like I did on the first part of the facing, I need to press in that long edge by my seam allowance. Again, this will just help me out later on. So now that that's done, I can add it to my hood. Lining up those notches. Lining up my edges. stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance the whole way around So I just need to clip my corners, turn my fabric right side out and press and ready to stitch right along that facing edge outside and in. Starting with the back stitch, sewing as close to the edge as I can get. That's the outside edge done. And the inside edge done. And now that just needs a final press and that completes my hood for now. I will be adding buttonholes here but I'll come back to it later on. Now on to the body of this little jacket. Starting with the front. I have two layers of gabardine fabric underneath my pattern piece and a few notches here so the usual sleeve notch and a couple of notches top and bottom of my placket and 
the first thing to do here is to mark the pocket. So popping in a pin at each side and marking with my chalk pen where that pin pierces the fabric. So that's my front all cut out and marked. So now on to the pocket. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece and some notches at each side of those little jagged edges. These will form the decorative edge at the top of the pocket. So to form those edges, I'm folding at those bottom two notches and pressing. Folding again at the next two notches and pressing again. So before I go any further, I want to add a little button tab. So I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece. And I'm running a stitch line at my one centimeter seam allowance the whole way around. And once I had this sewn, I realized it was a little bit too small. So I've just lengthened my pattern piece slightly. And here I'm just running a couple of lines of top stitching along that outer edge, just in exactly the same way as I did on the hood. So that's that done, ready to be added to my pocket. So I'm just placing it in between that fold and stitching right along the crease line making sure I'm catching the top of that tab as I go. Happy with that. So now that my tab is in place, I can stitch down those folds at each side. So sewing within my seam alliance, using a little bit of a longer stitch length, sides done. So now I'm ready for the lining. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece. Laying one of those pieces over the top, my fabric is right sides together and stitching here at my one centimeter seam alliance. So that's that all attached. Now to understitch. So off camera I've pressed my lining away from the pocket, made sure that seam alliance in underneath is butted up against it and I'm stitching through the lining through that seam alliance in underneath about a millimetre or two away from the stitch line you've just seen me sew. So that just needs a press which I've went ahead and done off camera and now to close up my pocket. So I'm folding at my notches lining up my edges and I'm going to stitch right around that outer edge leaving myself a little gap at the bottom to pull everything through. Back stitching to start at my one centimeter seam alliance, back stitching along that bottom edge, moving my fabric across leaving myself that nice little gap, back stitching again and continuing. So I've given that a good press, pulled everything through to the right side and now this piece is ready to be joined to my front. So just lining up my top two corners there with the marks you seen me place earlier and I want to add this same detail here as I added on the hood. So I'm going to run two lines of top stitching right along that outer edge. the first line complete and for the second just like before I'm lining the edge of my foot up with that first line of stitches and following the whole way around. So that's my pocket all in place. It's had a press. Happy with that and now that that's done I'm ready for my cape. 
I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece, my sleeve notch, and the first thing to do is to prep those edges. So I'm just pressing in underneath by about a centimetre and then pressing again by an inch this time. And I'm doing that along the centre front and bottom edge and ready to stitch. Stitching here right along that crease edge using that same longer stitch length again starting and finishing with a back stitch. So that's how to press and now this piece is ready to be joined to my front along that outer edge. So lining it up wrong side of cape to right side of front and pinning into place. And stitching here within my seam alliance I'm just tacking this into place for now. So now that my front cape's attached and had a press, I'm ready for underlining. I have two layers of that checked fabric underneath my pattern piece. And this is the same pattern piece as I've used for the front. You can see here I've just folded in that centre front edge and the hem. So now just lining up my centre fronts and pinning into place. Stitching at my 1cm seam alliance. Starting and finishing with a back stitch. And before I go any further, I want to run a line of understitching right along this seam. And before I can join this underlining to the outer edge, I need to miter my corner. So in preparation for that, I need to press up my hem. So just turning it in underneath by about a centimeter, giving myself a nice crease line there. And I have a little notch just in the center of that diagonal. I'm folding at that notch. My fabric is right sides together and pinning. I'm stitching here at about half of my seam alliance. I'll trim down my corner and press open that seam, which you can see here. And once it's all turned right side out and pressed, this is how it looks. So just a really nice, neat and clean finish to my corners, which I love. So that's the bottom edge of my centre front closed up. Now for the top. So I'm just folding at my crease line, lining up those notches you seen me clip earlier and sewing at my one centimeter seam alliance, starting at the center front and finishing at those notches. So that's the top and bottom edge of my center front all closed up and off camera I just ran that stitch line right around the outside of this piece, joining my underlining to my outer in exactly the same way as I did on my previous pieces. So now this piece is ready to be joined to my back at the shoulder. My fabric underneath is on the fold. I have the usual sleeve notches and I have a pleat running the whole way down this centre back seam. So a few notches to mark that top and bottom. So before I can join this to my front, I have a little bit of prep work to do. So I need to underline, which I've done off camera, and then I need to prep that pleat I mentioned. So my fabric is right side up. I'm folding at that first notch to the center and pressing into place. 
And then just like I did on the pocket earlier, I have a little tab I want to add here. So I'm just popping it in that fold and I'm going to stitch the whole way down right on the edge of that crease, making sure I'm catching that tab as I go. And this line of stitching is just going to help that pleat to stay in place. So that's that done. So my tab has been caught in that stitch line. So now to do exactly the same on the other side. So I've ran that stitch line off camera I've made sure my tab was out of the way as I went. So that's the two sides of my pleat all stitched down. Now to join it in the centre. So I'm just laying one side on top of the other on my crease line and I'm going to stitch down probably about 8 or 10 inches. it's had a good press this is how it looks. So that's my pleats all edge stitched on the inside, my centre sewed in place at the top. So I have one final thing to do to complete my pleat and that is to run that same edge stitch but this time on the outside. Starting at the hem with a back stitch using that same longer stitch length I've been using throughout and on this side, I want to catch that tab on the edge as I go. And just like the stitch lines on the inside, this is going to help to keep the shape of my pleat as I wear it. So that's my pleat fully prepped. It's had a good press and I'm very happy with how this has turned out. So now to add my cape. My fabric underneath is on the fold. I have a notch at the neck on the fold line and the usual sleeve notches and off camera I prepared this in exactly the same way as I did the front cape so I've just finished off that bottom edge and here just laying it over the top of my back wrong side of cape to right side of back and stitching within my seam allowance right along that outside edge. So that completes all the prep work required on the back. So now I can finish my edges. And you can see here I've just wrapped those with the bias in exactly the same way as I did the hood earlier. I've done the same thing on the front and now that that's done I'm ready to join my front to my back at the shoulders. My fabric is right sides together and stitching at my 1cm seam allowance starting and finishing with a back stitch. So that's my shoulder seams all closed up and pressed. So now for the side seams. Same thing again here, my fabric is right sides together and stitching at my 1cm seam allowance the whole way down. So I've pressed that seam open and this is how it looks. Happy with that. So next I just want to run a stitch line to secure that hem in place. So stitching right along the edge of that pre-prepared crease, taking this nice and gently, trying to keep to that edge the whole way around, using that same longer stitch length. So 
so I've given that a good press off camera and this is the result. And now that that's done, I'm ready for my collar. My fabric underneath is on the fold, so this is my top collar. I have a notched top and bottom of the fold line. And then for my collar stand, my fabric again is on the fold. I have corresponding notches on the fold line and at the shoulder. So now to join these two pieces together. So lining up my notches, lining up my edges and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start at my one centimeter seam alliance. Taking this nice and gently, I want to make sure I've got no little wrinkles in my fabric. Back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So I just need to trim down that seam alliance. So just folding my fabric at the edge, lining up that stitch line on both sides and cutting out little triangles. This will just help to reduce the bulk around that seam and make it lie nice and flat. And to further help that, I'm going to press this seam open. And while I'm there, I'm going to press up that bottom edge by my seam alliance. So that's my top collar all prepped and ready to be joined to my under collar. I have two layers of underlining fabric underneath my pattern piece. A little notch to help me line it up with the stand. I've ran a little bit of cotton interfacing on both sides and before I can join this to my stand I just need to sew down that center seam. So stitching here at my one centimeter seam alliance. And you can see here I've pressed that seam open I've prepped my under collar in exactly the same way with the interfacing. I'll join these two pieces together, press out my seam off camera, and this is the result. So now these two pieces are ready to be joined together around that outer edge. Starting with a back stitch, sewing at my one centimeter seam alliance. Pivoting up my corners and finishing with a back stitch. So I just need to trim down that seam, turn everything right side out and press. And now that that's done, I want to add that same decorative finish I've been adding throughout, which is that two lines of top stitching. So just finishing the second line here. Happy with that. So now before I can add this to my neckline, I just want to stitch these two pieces together. So I'm going to edge stitch right along that edge where the under collar joins to the collar. Taking this nice and gently, trying to be as accurate as I can be. So that's that done. It's had a press and this is how it looks. So that's all of the prep work required on my collar. Now to join it to my neckline. So lining up my notches, lining up my edges. stitching here at my one centimeter seam alliance. Back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So to reduce the bulk, I've trimmed down that seam alliance and here, just folding that creased edge right over the top of the line of stitching I've just sewn and pinning into place.
ready to stitch. Back stitching to start. Sewing right at the edge of that crease the whole way along. And finishing with a back stitch. So that just needs one final press and that completes my collar. Super happy with this. So now that that's done, I can move on to my sleeve. This is my upper sleeve. I have a few notches around the outer edge and the usual around the sleeve head. And I'm cutting this piece out in gabardine and also lining. So the first thing to do here is to add my sleeve tabs and I'm preparing these in exactly the same way as I did the little tabs both on my pocket and on my pleat. The only difference here is I'm using that underlining fabric just for a little bit of detail and now that that's all prepared I'm just going to tack this into place. So stitching within my seam allowance, back stitching to start and to finish. So now that my little strap is stitched down, I'm ready for my undersleeve. I have corresponding notches around the outer edge. And I'm cutting this piece out in gabardine and lining. So just laying my undersleeve with my upper sleeve right side together, lining up my notches and pinning, and stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. And before closing up my sleeve completely, I want to add those two lines of top stitching to this seam. So I've given it a good press and here just finishing my second line. Happy with that. So now that that's done, I can close up my sleeve. So laying one side over the other right sides together lining up my notches, making sure my tab is out of the way and stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So I've pressed that seam open off camera. I've also pressed up my hem by my allowance stitch together my lining and now I'm ready to join the two pieces together first of all along that hem so popping my lining over the top my fabric is right sides together lining up those seams and stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance And once that's been turned right way out and pressed, this is how it looks. Super happy with this. And now one final bit of preparation before I can add this to my jacket. And that is to sew the lining to the outer fabric around the armhole. So stitching within my seam allowance. Back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So that completes all of the prep work required for my sleeve. And now this is ready to be joined to my jacket. So lining up my underarm seam, lining up my notches and ready to stitch. Sewing here at my one centimeter seam allowance, starting and finishing with a back stitch. So 
So I just need to take care of that edge and I've treated it in exactly the same way as I did all my other seams. So I've ran that bias around the edge. So that's my sleeve all in place and my seams taken care of. So now that that's done, I'm ready to add my buttonholes. So I'm laying one coat front over the other, lining up my centers and then marking my button placement. Stitching my buttonholes here in the usual way. I'll finish those off camera. So now I just need to open up those buttonholes and mark the placement of my buttons. So again, laying one front over the other, and then I'm just going to use my marking pen here to mark a dot right in the center of each of those buttonholes. I'm using these little standard tortoiseshell buttons, and I'll sew those on off camera, and this is how it looks. So I've added those to the center front, to all of my tabs, around the under collar. I've also added those buttonholes I mentioned earlier, to the hood facing and with that this little anorak is complete so I've got my collar all in place that checked fabric underneath got my capes my buttons down the center front my pockets with their tabs and that nice little flap on the top my hem in place my detachable hood which I absolutely love Got my cape at the back, my little cuff tabs with their buttons, and then one of my favourite details on this jacket, that pleat down the centre back. I love that. And then on the inside, all of that lovely underlining and those gorgeous edges in that contrasting bias. And this is how it looks on. So I am over the moon with this. The fit is so nice. This underlining gives it a bit more substance. It's quite a warm little jacket. I love all of the details. Those capes front and back, the pockets, all of those lovely little tabs. That hood I absolutely love. I love also that it's detachable. And then as I mentioned, my favorite detail is that pleat along the center back absolutely love this so i really hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope you find it useful if you did give it a thumbs up if you've not yet subscribed please do and i shall see you on friday until then i hope you have a fantastic week bye folks